was Jesus based on the Sumerian goddess Inanna? Many mysticists say Jesus was just a myth, who was copied from Inanna. Some have been so bold as to claim that Inanna was a perfect skeleton for the legend of Jesus. So today we're going to be going over how the descent of Inanna really relates to the Jesus mythos. Um, and, and how her story is a perfect skeleton for uh, Jesus and like his passion story in general. The problem is there is not a scholar who would say this or even claim Inanna as a perfect comparison to Christ. Even Richard Carrier flat out says, Even so, my point is not that Christians got the idea of a crucified God from the early Inanna cult. I always caution strongly against overzealous attempts to link Christianity with prior religions. So saying Inanna is a perfect mirror, a perfect skeleton for Jesus is even cautioned by someone who argues there was some direct or indirect influence. No one in their right mind says the two are a perfect comparison. Carrier does try to argue there was influence from Inanna for the life of Jesus. He claims Inanna was crucified and resurrected, stripped naked, dead for three days and three nights, and she also descended into hell. Well, let's look at our primary sources for Inanna. First, all this comes from an ancient Sumerian account called Inanna's Descent into the Underworld, or the Akkadian parallel called Ishtar's Descent. And neither account ever uses the terms crucified or resurrected. The Akkadian account really has no parallels at all. Ishtar descends into the Underworld, has to go through seven gates, and at each gate she loses a piece of jewelry or clothing. Then she is thrown into prison and disease is inflicted upon her. A servant of the gods descends to rescue her because there's no animal or human having sex while she's in the underworld as she is the goddess of fertility. And then they sprinkle water and oil on her to heal her, get her belongings back, and return her home. As a ransom, her husband Tammuz has to take her place in the underworld. So no parallel to Jesus here whatsoever. The Sumerian account is almost the exact story, yet far more detailed. First, the account never says she was crucified, and there isn't any evidence of crucifixion from the time these tablets date to. It says that after she went through the seven gates of the underworld and was naked, she tried to take the throne of her sister, the queen of the underworld, and the judges from the underworld surrounded her and turned her into a corpse. Then her dead body is hung on a hook. The only real vague similarities are being stripped naked and the word hung. But Inanna was stripped over the course of seven different instances, and she had a completely different outfit. And this was all an attempt to seize the throne of the underworld. Jesus was stripped naked as part of his execution process. He didn't lose a piece of clothing at seven different gates, nor was he trying to seize a throne, and just happened to die in the process like with Inanna. Most importantly, Inanna was not murdered by being hung or crucified. Her body was simply placed on a hook like a piece of meat. There is not a Sumerian scholar who has ever compared this to crucifixion. And there is no evidence such a practice even existed in ancient Sumeria. It is quite a stretch to claim a corpse being placed on a hook is a parallel to the Roman execution process of crucifixion. So this is hardly a parallel, as Maurice Casey said. In the context of discussing the historicity of Jesus of Nazareth, it is not the same thing at all. Jesus suffered the Roman penalty of crucifixion, and Inanna, a goddess worshipped in Sumer, two millennia previously did not. Thus Jesus was nailed to a cross so that he would die, whereas Inanna was hung from a hook on a wall, as large joints of meat were, and still are. Second, she also was not dead for three days and three nights. People who claim this did not read the translation of the tablets carefully enough. It says after three days and three nights, a servant of Inanna, Ninkubura, started pleading to the gods on her behalf. And this took quite a while. She goes to several different gods, goes and does some strange stuff in private, and has to journey around trying to find help for the goddess. We don't know how long this took or how long Inanna was in the underworld while this was going on. The three days and three nights of waiting would have correlated to her descent into the underworld. In the beginning of the story, Inanna tells Ninkubura to start this pleading process on the day she arrives in the underworld. We then read later that after Nana left Ninkubura, she did this three days and three nights later. So that means it was a three day and three night journey to the underworld. 
and Inanna would not have been transformed into a corpse yet. The next issue is if she was resurrected, and all Carrier did was change the meaning to force a parallel. Remember, Inanna did not become human, die on Earth, have her spirit leave her body, only to be resurrected three days later in a new glorified body. She was an immortal goddess who was turned into a corpse in the underworld, so not on our plane of existence, and only brought back to life through a special plant and water. This is hardly a comparison to the Jewish idea of resurrection, and she wasn't even human, nor did she receive a new glorified body. She also didn't die for the sins of the world. She died because she was greedy and stupid. She was never worshipped as a resurrected savior, or even titled that. Finally, the New Testament doesn't claim Jesus descended into the underworld after his death. This was a later Christian idea, but it was not part of the New Testament. If anything, Jesus returned to be with the Father, since he tells the thief on the cross that they will be in paradise together. So once we look at the details, we can see this story is nothing like the death and resurrection of Christ. You can make anything match if you just change the meaning and ignore the details to find generalized patterns. Godless Engineer also has done something quite odd. He recognizes there are clear differences between Jesus and Inanna, but instead of recognizing that could be evidence that they really aren't parallels, he just asserts without evidence that the Jews changed that part. So he recognizes there are differences, but those don't matter because he's already decided that Jesus was a copy from Inanna, based on cherry-picking vague similarities. In reality, there is nothing to support a connection here, as no New Testament or Sumerian scholar claims any resemblance. As Maurice Casey says, The stories of the death of Jesus, much of which are literally true, and of his resurrection, have nothing whatsoever to do with stories of the Sumerian goddess Inanna, and for similar reasons, nothing to do with creatures who have been loosely labeled by modern scholars as dying and rising deities. So since that is the case, there is no evidence Jesus was just a myth based on Inanna.